at about 250,000 feet above the uh, Earth's surface. Astronauts Engel and Truly are angling the spaceship Columbia, the second space shuttle, toward the Edwards Air Force Base in California where the winds in, are high and where it's going to be a, a tricky landing. We are uh, roughly seven minutes away from the end of the communications blackout period, a blackout period uh, forced by the tremendous heat and uh, other factors as the spacecraft comes into the Earth's atmosphere, which it has been doing now for uh, about the past eight minutes. We're roughly seven minutes away from the end of the blackout period. We're roughly uh, 21 minutes away from the landing at Edwards Air Force Base if all goes well. The landing should take place at about 22 minutes past the hour. As we await the end of the blackout, Morton Dean and uh, astronaut Paul Weitz are in Houston. Mort? Dan, uh, again, we're sitting in a, uh, we've just made a quick re-entry ourselves. <laughs> we're sitting in one of the um, uh, shuttle trainers here at uh, the Johnson Space Center. Paul, I'd, I'd like to know uh, just how many flights uh, Engel and Truly have actually made into that runway. I would imagine test flights would be in the hundreds between the beginning of their training and today. Well, don't forget the thing that's in their advantage, Mort, is they have actually flown uh, the orbiter, not the one they're in now, but the one previous to that on the ALT, the Approach and Landing Test Program, and have made as a crew two previous approaches and landings at Edwards. Let me just explain the ALT was when the uh, shuttle was flying piggyback on a 747 and was jettisoned off, and they did fly it. You're right, I forgot all about that. That's correct. Plus, if uh, I don't know if the program has showed that some of the uh, approaches that John Young was making earlier in a shuttle training aircraft, and both Dick and Joe have made many, many, as you were correct in that assumption, hundreds of approaches to the lake bed under various uh, lighting conditions, different sun angles, different wind conditions. Paul, what are they doing right now? They're, they're kind of uh, nose up now, aren't they? They're not uh, twisted around as we are. That, that's correct. Obviously, their, their attention is at, uh, on the task before them. They're paying attention to what they're seeing on, on the screens and on the indicators. And uh, uh, the ma maneuvers that I had previously mentioned uh, to determine the aerodynamic qualities of this machine are being uh, flown now, some of them automatically by the computers and some by manual inputs by uh, Joe Engel. A real test of the shuttle, and of course we must emphasize Paul and Dan and Bonnie and Walter and Leo that this is indeed a test mission, one of four, uh, before the big operational missions begin. Dan? Thank you very much, Morton Dean uh, and astronaut Paul Weitz uh, in Houston. We are approximately uh, five minutes from the end of the communications blackout time, but we're about seven minutes from the actual resumption of communications because keep in mind, when the blackout actually ends, the spacecraft is not in a position to communicate with any particular place on Earth, and it will be another couple of minutes after the blackout ends before communications will actually be heard. This is a moment of uh, tension and, yes, some drama, because we haven't heard from the astronauts for a few minutes now. No indication that anything is wrong at all. So five minutes uh, t until the end of blackout, roughly seven minutes to the resumption of communications, and about 19 minutes until the landing at Edwards Air Force Base in California. Our CBS News coverage of the return of the space shuttle will continue in just a moment. We are roughly uh, three minutes away from the end of the blackout period, the uh, forced blackout period for the astronauts, about five minutes away from actually hearing their voices because they have to, once they're out of the blackout period, reestablish communication with an Earth ground station. Uh, the next one they'll be reestablishing communication with is the Buckhorn ground station in California, roughly 17 minutes away from landing. The landing at Edwards Air Force Base scheduled for 22 minutes after this hour. We've mentioned before, we'll mention again, could be an especially uh, tricky, uh, dangerous landing for the astronauts at Edwards Air Force Base, partly because the wind is uh, up there rather high. The uh, astronauts already have been informed that they've had a change in the landing strip that they'll be using at Edwards Air Force Base. Of course, one of the reasons that uh, NASA has chosen this area as the prime landing spot is because there is so much space out there on that uh, desert floor, a desert floor that's been used uh, over the years for, among other things, the making of John Wayne movies. Uh, but the, as far as the space program is concerned, it's an ideal landing spot uh, for the spacecraft because it uh, allows for such a wide margin for error. You'll remember the first time the space shuttle came down, it was a picture-perfect landing. As you can see on our running clock, uh, 15, uh, roughly 15 and a half minutes until landing time, uh, a little over two minutes until the blackout period ends, maybe a little less than that and about uh, four minutes, perhaps a little less than that, until we uh, hope to reestablish communications with the astronauts. 
mission control is uh, speaking not to the astronauts at the moment, but uh, to all assembled. Let's just pick up a Why few of those words. Turn to line up with the runway at about 40,000 feet. Joe Engel will fly this manually, control stick steering. Then uh, he will go to the automatic landing system, taking back over manually at about 2,000 feet just prior to pre-flare. Mission Control uh, explaining the procedure the that Joe Engel will be using. It'll be a combination of uh, manual uh, and automatic uh, controls for landing. We're but uh, the plan remains for Joe Engel to uh, land it manually, away. as was the case uh, last time, the first time that the space shuttle came down. We astronaut Bonnie Dunbar with me here in our uh, New York studios. Bonnie, at this moment, the astronauts would be doing what? And again, the uh, attitude of the uh, space shuttle is uh, roughly this. Their altitude is something less than 200,000 feet at the moment. That's true. We're probably about 180,000 feet, and I demonstrated the 40-degree angle of attack earlier, which is held constant pretty much through the thermal control phase. This will ramp down to about 14 degrees, as uh, was mentioned earlier, for the terminal area energy management uh, period. I'm told that we have radar contact, radar contact at about 188,000 feet. Uh, we s the astronauts are not yet out of their blackout period, although we expect them to be out uh, just, uh, well, almost any moment now. But it'll be a couple of more minutes before, uh, according to the schedule, that actual communications will be uh, reestablished with them. We have uh, an animated look at the landing procedure at Edwards Air Force Base, so perhaps uh, we could take a look at that. Bonnie, uh, perhaps you'd want to narrate the plan for the landing in high wind. Well, again, they'll be coming into uh, runway 23. They'll come circle around, as you see, as he's coming in, it's called a hack, heading alignment circle, flaring down, pre-flaring and landing. Uh, the initial uh, angle coming in there is about 19 degrees. When you land commercially, it's more like two and a half degrees. What about the speed, Bonnie? When we land uh, in a commercial airliner, the speed of the airliner is what, uh, a little over 200 miles an hour? Well, actually, uh, in a 727, it's probably less than that, and you'll be landing, the orbiter landing around 200 miles an hour, about 212 miles an hour. But I think what's really significant is that as a, you approach this runway in the shuttle, you're dropping at about 10,000 feet per minute, whereas a normal aircraft, it might be 500 feet per minute before well, you flare out. The animation, about I think, gave us a little bit of feel of that, that, that this is a very large spacecraft and it drops like a rock. Let's pick up uh, the voice of mission control at the moment. configure AOS. You're about 25 miles south of ground track. Your nav is good. Your energy is good. We'd like you to check your TACAN, MLS, and radar altimeters on. Over. Okay, Rick, good to hear you. And we're showing 10.5 mark and 165,000 feet now. The astronauts back in okay, contact with mission control. Show. And did you get my call on the nav aid? Okay, we got the call on the nav aid. Roger, everything's looking good. Your energy is very good. The nav is good. Out of 154,000 at 9.8. Roger, Rick. The astronauts have been through the deorbit burn. They've been through their blackout period. They're back in communications now. Roger. Range now 350. Oh, and we just got the reversal. Roger. The spacecraft is nearing the coast of California. Part of the energy management. And Rick, the maneuvers have been going very good. The bird is real solid. Good, solid bird all the way. Well, we love hearing it. And we requested TNC, I.O. reset to bring the MLSs uh, into the uh, software. Over. And what a sight the astronauts should have as they enter the coast of, uh, over the coast of California in the Big Sur country up there. Uh, how much of that will they actually be able to see, Bonnie Dunbar? It depends a little bit on cloud cover, and uh, I don't have enough information around that area. There was some this morning, but they'll still have a pretty fantastic view. Out of 143,000 feet now. Keep in mind that the astronauts have no way of getting out of that spacecraft alive until they reach uh, 100,000 feet and below. 100,000 feet and below, they could uh, eject if they had to. Through the computer. Okay, back to auto. PTI-2 is selected. Roger. Mach 7.4. Senior, go for TAC-N. Roger. 
Navigation information now being fed in. As you look at the faces Roger, of Mission Dick. Control, one is reminded how many hundreds of thousands of people have poured Should their skill, work, and care into this space shuttle project. Uh, get across the, With uh, just approximately 10 uh, minutes before uh, time to land at the Edwards Air Force Base in California, landing still scheduled for roughly 22 minutes after the hour. Let's go to. Edwards Air Force Base, and Walter Cronkite along with Leo Krupp. Walter? Beginning to converge onto the nominal ground track. 